Hello, my name is Abdullah. I go to Florida State University. I'm a PhD student and Fulbright scholar. Um, yeah, I'm doing my PhD in mathematics. I've been I've been asked to make a video of my Fulbright interview experiences uh, by my friend Muhammad Wakas, and I hope this video is beneficial to those who watch it. I mean, if you do watch it, kudos to you, because I, I I'll be pretty general. Um, uh, two disclaimers: number one. Uh, the opinions in in this video are my own and my own explicitly. They are not Fulbright, the Fulbright Commission's A and B. I don't think we're allowed to talk about our ex uh, Fulbright interview experiences explicitly. But you know, it's been a long time, and I think I can be I can give you general guidance on what to expect and what not, not to expect. That wouldn't be against the um, Fulbright Commission's uh, requirements, guidelines. But so. Um, I'm going to talk about my experiences, um, the plural, right? Um, I applied for the Fulbright Scholarship back in 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2016. Yes, I applied for the Fulbright Scholarship four times. And um, well, needless to say, I didn't get selected in the first three times, right? Uh, and the first time, I didn't even get it to the interview. I didn't even make it to the interview because, uh, you know, I my application i just i figured my application wasn't something you know just randomly fill out you know it's not just your name and address the random stuff that you fill out right you have to actually work on your application so i did just that in after my first rejection and um, the next three times i pretty much used the um, same application you know um except for the fact that i had a masters in my 2016 application All right so basically this background is to tell you that your app your interview can make or break your case you know it's it is a vital um, component of the Fulbright application process right um, in, in general right um, I mean the purpose of any interview uh, if, if you've, you've been lucky enough to make it to the interview cut right the uh, panel or the selection board is already impressed with your credentials right they just want to see how you are as a person right um, I mean, I could attach supporting documentation for who I am, right? I mean, yeah, you, but believe me, I am not my CGP, I'm not my GRE score, I'm not the number of papers that I published. I, in fact, I'm not even the, um, I don't know, one page essay or personal statement that I write. Because A, it's, it's a highly polished version of me, right? It's, you know, it's my refined self, you know, it's, it's not my true self, you know. Well, you definitely don't want to show your true self to anyone, right? But I'm just saying, you know, it's just like you you market yourself differently on on paper than in real life, you know. That's and that's an interview basically judges how how compatible you are in real life and on paper, right? So that's the purpose of the interview. So um, uh, keep that keep, keep keep this in mind that all all three times my application was pretty much the same. Uh, every time I made it to the interview, except for the fact that I had masters in my last application in 2016. Okay, so, uh, so my first interview, I'm um, like three, four minutes in after the usual questions, right? The icebreaker, what I want to do, what makes me different, whatever, right? So three, four minutes into in into the interview, uh, the interviewer asks me that my CGPA doesn't look exceptional, and the um, the the universities that I mentioned on my application were Ivy Leagues mostly, right? Hey, I just had a master, uh, I had a bachelor's degree. Uh, you know, I was naive and hopeful with ambitions. You know, just want to take over the world. You know, I can do this, right? You know, you, when you're young and naive. You you have these aspirations. You know, you just have this disregard, ex extreme disregard for what's real, right? <laughs> so, um, I I actually got offended by the question. You know. I mean, it wasn't like I went berserk, right? Uh, or it wasn't like that I shouted screaming or anything. I mean, we wouldn't call it a hot exchange, right? But it was it it I, uh, whatever that was, right? It wasn't an exact response that should have been from uh, somebody who's a little mature enough to handle, you know, some negativity, right? Or some perceived criticism, right? Um, I mean, in generally, right? It's common to expect people not to agree with your point of view, right? People don't have to share 
uh, th- your viewpoint, right? People, <coughs> y- people are entitled to their own opinions, right? You you can't force your opinions on. Sorry, my throat gets dry usually. So, <coughs> so mm, people uh, people have their own opinions, right? You can't you can't force yourself on people, right? And there's no need to get offended if some no nope, somebody doesn't share your viewpoint, right? I mean, sure, you can be respectful and argue your case, right? But that's the most you can do, right? There's no need to get offended. So rule number one, in an interview and in general life, please, we're missing this a lot. Please be respectful, right? And do not expect everybody to agree with your viewpoint of the world, right? Everybody has had different experiences, right? But what brings everybody together is that we're respectful of each other. Respectful of each other. And we can use everybody else's experiences to make the world a better place. So, um, rule number one, in an interview, don't lose focus. Don't lose your head. Needless to say, that always applies, but especially in an interview. Um, Rule number two, uh, the second thing that I learned from my interview. uh, So, I, I think this was the main point in my first interview, and moving on to my second interview, back in 2014 when I applied for master's again. So I had learned not to be disrespectful, right? <laughs> or at least uh, just be a little more calmer, right? More calm, sorry. Calmer, calm. Um, anyway, so um, um, so I go into the interview, right? Um, for well prepared, um, and in I think it went pretty pretty smooth, right? Um, I just if. No, I didn't get the scholarship that time either. Even though I, the interview went pretty smooth, I don't remember any awkward silences. I don't remember anything that I sh- uh, said that I did should not have said. You know, everything was um, in line with my application, right? And I justified to myself maybe you know the um, funding for math isn't uh, you know funding for math students isn't as available as funding for other disciplines that's how i consoled myself and you know moved on but in retrospect i think the um what what killed my case that time was uh that my answers were mostly parroted you know they were rehearsed you know what wasn't my true self you know it was was I might have come i might have come off as as though somebody as though somebody had fed those responses to me you know so um, just you know, be true. Whenever you, if you go to an interview, be true, right? Uh, be your true self. Um, and uh, I think that's exactly what I did in my final attempt, right? I was asked different questions. You, you know, what you want to do when you, uh, what are you going to do with the scholarship? Um, why should we give you the scholarship? Why do you want to, uh, uh, you know, what are you going to do when you come back? Right, those sort of questions, and uh, my responses were pretty spontaneous uh, at that, that time. You know, in fact, it was they were so spontaneous. I remember a question, in which I gave a um, sort of frustrated, realistic reply. You know, in a comical way, that actually made the committee laugh. And uh, yeah, and it was it was you know it was it, it expressed my frustration with how the world doesn't work. You know how what's missing is what I want to do with it. You know. In a very respectful way, right? In a funny and respectful way, I think that that uh, that spontaneity that made my case that day because I was my true self. That was my true self, you know. I was that was just me talking. I was what I had written, written on my application. That was you know a polished version of me. But and at the interview was there was me uh, as I usually am, you know. So I think that made my case in the. Um, in the final interview so um oh this media video is already nine nine minutes long so I'll, I'll cut it short um so to wrap it up your uh, your uh, application your interview can make or break your case definitely it's it's a very important part of your uh, interview process it's like i said i mean i had the same application the three times that i got it got into the interview and uh, um, be calm and be yourself. That is the best advice I can give. I know it's not. It's I know it's a usual advice everybody else just gives up, but trust me, it is. It is the crux of everything. Uh, you know, 
whatever you want to do is just remember these two points stay calm be yourself and if you're if you have an interview coming up I wish you good luck if you want to prepare I wish you good luck if you you know it's um, I hope I hope you do get the scholarship if you're applying for the Fulbright team thank you for listening and thank you for tolerating me